is many's a gay night from dark till daylight I spend with people of high renown. But in all their grandeur and hips to squander, my heart would wander for sweet Oma Town. A very good evening to you and a very warm welcome to Sweet Oma Town Internet Radio. And on the other line, we should have, I hope we have, Declan Ford. You certainly have. And do we have a Richard Hurst on the other line? You do have Richard Hurst ah, here, Don. The technology works. Good evening to you all, gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here tonight. Uh, this, great is to have this, is, this is just lean triangle. Aye. Good to have a bit of Kaelian. <laughs> this is, this well, is a I good believe we're going to talk tonight about bluegrass music, Richard. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a bit, a bit of it, is right. Bluegrass uh-huh. in old time, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and, of course, the great event that takes place every year in, in Sweet Omi Town. Yes, um, we were gearing, gearing up for the 30th festival that was to happen at the end of May. Uh-huh. But, as you know, uh, COVID-19 put pay to all of that. Oh, yes, yes. So Because uh, the festival started in 1992, De- Declan. Mm-hmm. If you remember, and indeed. Declan wasn't born, Richard. He wasn't born. He <laughs> <laughs> was in. He was in nappy. He was. <laughs> but uh, it's hard to believe it was all those years ago, and always held in in late August, early September, uh-huh. and um, for, for all sorts of reasons, um, primarily down to the success of the event, and um, you know the the preparation that goes into it at the height of the summer. We we decided about a year ago to, to move the festival to the to the end of May. And this was to be our first our first go at it. Uh the the twenty ninth festival was to take place at the end of May, but it ain't gonna happen. That was the twenty second, the twenty fourth, Richard, yes. That's right, I I and uh, but it, it's about three weeks ago now since since we announced the cancellation, uh, I got in touch with all the artists and suppliers and uh, sponsors and stakeholders and gave them the news. And then um, over the last fortnight, we've actually, within the organisation, been spending quite a bit of time paying refunds to people who had booked. I mean, the, the festival actually... Uh, went online for ticket sales last November and was doing really well. But I'm, I'm happy to say that that most people have actually rolled over their, their pre-purchase tickets to, to next year, 2021. Oh, and um, we'll come back bigger and better. Oh, uh, absolutely. So we will. As Del Boy would say, this time next year. Sorry? Sorry? As Del Boy would say, this time next year. That's right. <laughs> Richard, do you remember when the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band came and played? I do, 1999. Now, that wasn't the Bluegrass Festival, Declan. That was the the 25th anniversary of the opening of the Ulster American Folk Park. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Because, again, we were all younger then, but... Uh, well, I wasn't around in 1976, but maybe you two were. <laughs> do, you, do you guys remember the opening of the Folk Park in July of 76? Yeah, I do indeed, yeah. I'm, I, I, I was there. Uh, it was uh, uh, um, Richard, an amazing Richard, when, when, when did, was the idea to, to float a, a bluegrass concert, or how did that ever come about? It came about, Don, as a result of a, an approach that was made from the Northern Ireland Tourist Board at the time. Um, Northern Ireland Tourist Board and Board Falcha, yeah. as they were known, the tourism authorities in the south of Ireland, they worked together um, back at that time in, in, in 1992. Uh, what they were attempting to do was... Um, a big marketing promotion called the Irish Homecoming Festival, and there, there were there was grant support for different organisations uh, to get involved in the Irish Homecoming Festival, and we did a bit of a brainstorming uh, at work and came up with this idea of using 
music, song and dance to tell the story that that we do at the folk park around immigration. And so it was really uh, a no-brainer when you think of the the music, song and dance that would have left Ireland and, and, and travelled to America in the 18th and 19th century and settled in Appalachia. And uh, that was the whole idea. But we never thought that almost 30 years on we would still be at it. And, uh, you know, it, it's now one of the largest bluegrass festivals outside of North America. So we must be doing something right. Certainly going from strength to strength, you know, yeah. Ah, yeah, and it's great to see so many uh, younger men and women coming along to the festival, especially the last five years. And uh, it, it has to be said, a lot of local support uh, from music lovers around the Oma area. And uh, the, the former Oma District Council, now Fermanagh and Oma District Council, they've been uh, major partners and, and uh, supporters of the festival throughout all those years, so uh, yeah, it was yeah. great to get that support. But yeah, what surprises me about the folk park is it's all handled in-house by yourselves. There's no event management company looking after this. This is totally just your own your own efforts and your own That's staff. That's right. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's done by several people, um, myself and Patrick O'Kane, you would know, uh, and Sinead Cunningham is our, our marketing person, uh, James Moore, uh, fr- from the town as well, you know these are all 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 people from Oma and its environs. So we've we've had a few uh, hairy moments over the years when you think of some of the instances that that have affected it. You know whether it be weather, whether it be other events. Um, you know when you've been running a festival like this for 30 years, all sorts of things do happen. Artists getting lost, getting on the wrong flights and arriving in different airports than they're supposed to, right through to to, to tragedies like um, 9-11, uh, when uh, in 2001, um, the Bailey Mountain Cloggers, you know, the Appalachian Clog Dancers from Mars Hill College, you, you you would have seen them yes. over the years, mm-hmm. yes. Declan and, and, and Dawn. Yeah. Um, the festival was actually over, and this was a group of about 16 students from Mars Hill College in North Carolina. We were driving them, believe it or not, to Dublin Airport for them to fly back in 2001, and the whole 9-11 tragedy uh, came about. And those kids um, stayed with us in, in the residential centre at the Folk Park for two weeks after the festival, a whole two weeks. That's how long it took to actually really? organise flights yes. again to get them back to America, right through to, 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 to other events you know, over the years that have affected us. But happy to say we're, we'll get through this one. But, oh, yeah. but Declan, 1999, were you there to see the Nitty Gritty Dirt I Band? I was indeed, and, and the local musicians played with them. Uh-huh, that's I right. I that, and oh, it was an electric concert. It was amazing. It, was it really, it really <laughs> was. Did one of the members from the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band have uh, relatives in Oma? Yes, they did. Was there that's some kind of familial connection? That's right, that's right. Jimmy Ibbotson has oh, cousins. Yeah. First cousins living in Oma, oh oh and um, we we that's how we made the connection. Um, so so Jimmy Abbotson, um, he his grandparents were from Oma. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, w- uh, one of the grandparents obviously went went out from Oma, and married uh, on the other side a person from from Donegal. I, I can't say who was the, you know. The, the the grandmother or the grandfather there was a Donegal Tyrone connection anyway mm-hmm. and um, yes 1999 in the, in the field behind the Mellon Homestead we had over 5,000 people there for a wonderful concert oh, featuring the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band it was brilliant oh, just, it, was it just really was amazing absolutely amazing and then of course you know the I mean the, the folk park is such a great venue the, uh, the ship gallery so my, my daughter had a wedding reception there. That's right, and and you you've you've performed there yourself yes, over yes, the yes, years yes, as well. But it's storytelling out there. But yes. I, I must tell you, Richard, uh, 
my daughter married a man from Scotland, and uh, of course a lot of Scottish people at the, the wedding. But there were there were a few friends from Japan came over, uh-huh. and we didn't put them past their notion because the two of them actually thought that we owned the folk park, that it, it was our <laughs> private town. <laughs> so we, did, we didn't tell them it was a museum at all. They were very very impressed by it. All right. Well. <laughs> You said did they return the nothing. favor? Did you get yourself out to Japan? Oh no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> what it was, a, it was an absolutely fantastic venue, and the Scottish contingent just—they had a ball. Yes, they, uh, so you know, we we are licensed for for weddings, uh, civil ceremonies uh, yeah. at the folk park. You can get married in the in the schoolhouse at the Ulster American Folk Park. Yeah. You can have your reception in places like the ship gallery. Oh yeah, I, I, uh, we, I think we had the, there was a champion reception up in the reception area of the the, the, the folk park itself, and then down yes. to the ship gallery and all oh, the venue. And, and of course, the the great local bluegrass band, Naughty Pine, they supplied the music, and the the, the Scots yes. guys were like they were like hurling dervishes. They never got off the floor. Once the, the first number started, they just danced nonstop. It was amazing. There you are. Oh, no, so. it's, it's, it's a very infectious music, you know, oh, old time of bluegrass music, and um, ah. you know, it's 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 that's that's why people have kind of enjoyed what we what we can deliver year on year, uh, featuring not only the the American acts uh, who who come in, in larger numbers every year, but also the home. We can't forget the homegrown talent like the Naughty Pine String Band. And the Cool Hand String Band are, are the next generation coming up. And the Broken String yeah. Band as well from Belfast have been with you from the start as the well. The Broken String Band mm-hmm. have been involved since the very beginning as well. Mm-hmm. But I'm very happy to uh, say, see the, the younger men and women, as I said, who, who are coming along to the festival the last few years, and that all bodes well for the yeah. future. Oh, absolutely. In, in bluegrass terms, Richard, you've had some household names there as well, haven't you? You know. Uh, That's right. Um you know, over the years we've we've had Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver, Claire Lynch, uh, Dale Ann Bradley, Laurie Lewis. Um, one of our favourites w- was Daly and Vincent. Um, you know, J- Jamie Daly and Darren Vincent, um, and, and and these people they go back to America with um, very good uh, experience of the festival. Of Oma because remember they they're staying in local hotels and guest houses. Uh, we 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 look after them. We we try to to take them across the the north of Ireland, maybe up to Belfast to do some uh, radio interviews or up to Derry. Maybe you try and even believe it or not, take in the Giants Causeway, do a bit of a tourist trip with them as well if time allows. Because what we want them to do, Don, we want them to go back to America with with a very good impression of the folk park and Oma, and um, you know this all, all all helps us into the future. And in 2016, the festival was actually uh, nominated for for the category of Event of the Year at the International Bluegrass Music Awards. We didn't actually win, but it, it was wonderful to be nominated. It's an honor, it's an honor, yes. We were the only ones out, outside of North America yeah. that year, and, and we were very yeah. uh, delighted with that, you know. And so you've, so, take, sorry, you've, yeah. you've taken the, a lot of musicians around to the churches and various things as well around Oma when, when they're... When that's, they're right. Th- that's right, that's right. Uh, working with the Oma Churches Forum, we, we've had them perform in uh, Oma First Presbyterian, uh, in the Church of Ireland, in the Sacred Heart, uh, out at Lis Limnahan from time to time, or the Mount Joy Church itself, uh, the, the the church um, at Mount Joy, which is where the original immigrant Thomas Mellon would have worshipped uh, back in the early 1800s before his family first went to America, and yes. without Mellon making that journey. And the gospel, none of us would so your be gospel, talking about it yes. tonight. And your gospel yeah. evening is always a very big event as well, isn't it? That's right. Yes, we'd sold quite a number of tickets for for the gospel concert, uh, and that takes place in our replica meeting house, um, and that was to feature Appalachian Roadshow, 
uh, this coming May. But what's actually happened as well, um, Declan and Don, mm-hmm. the the meeting house at the Ulster American Folk Park has no roof on it at the minute. It's it's going through a major rethatching, a uh, complete uh, rethatch right down to the rafters, and um, it's a project. It's probably the largest thatched roof project on the island at the minute. Mm-hmm. Now it has been suspended because of the restrictions, and uh, the, the the thatcher is is a man from from Donegal, who is itching to get back to it. But whenever he does, uh, we're we're going to have a beautiful uh, rice straw uh, roof on on the meeting house again, and the gospel concert will take place there in May of 2021. What I should say is, I think the dates are something like the 28th to the 31st of May in 2021, and most of the acts that we had booked for 2020, I've actually managed to secure them for a year's time. So Appalachian Roadshow, Jonathan Bird and the Pickup Cowboys, uh, the Bailey Mountain Cloggers, they've all um, managed to to look at their diaries and confirm for for May of 2021. So although we're disappointed that we're not presenting them in about, what, six weeks' time in Oma, um, they're they're all secured for for 2021, which is fantastic. That is brilliant. Well, we look forward to that. Something to, and these dark days, some uh, some ray of sunshine to look forward to. You know. That's right. That's right. And and people do bring along their instruments as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's 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 lots of opportunities for for sessions um, across the the museum site over the weekend, and. I don't know if it's going to happen. Don't don't hold me to it. But but you know there is a possibility uh, if we you know get back to some kind of normality and I can get back into the office again uh, in the not too distant future. I would love to think that we might even try and have a a bit of a taster session uh, in in the autumn of this year, maybe in September. Uh, we might we might bring some of the homegrown talent from around Oma and and other parts of the country to, lovely, to, yeah. to to the folk park for not on the scale of anything like the Bluegrass Festival, um, but maybe we get a few bands around for a couple of days and um, just just celebrate the the fact that we can we can do that again. Yeah, it's so that you're open for business. Yeah, I'll I'll certainly tell you more about that. Um, uh, in due course. Brilliant, brilliant. Look forward to that. Definitely. And what about you, Declan? How are you doing? Oh, well, I'm 100%. Well, I, I was to go out to the Catskills uh, in oh, yes. July, and I don't know if that's been cancelled. And you'd be flying into New York? I'd be flying into New York. I think I, I, uh, I suspect it could be postponed as well. Uh, the, the, um, it was an Irish festival, and... Uh, Yes, uh, I would say now with what's happening, uh, it could be disrupted. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but these things happen, and we just knuckle down and play on. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All but- we can do. Richard, I, you know, I've been around the folk park for many years as well, and I'm always amazed at the, the number of people come up to say to me how well they feel they've been looked after in the folk park. And I wonder how do you instil yes. how do you instill that in all the staff that you have? Because every person that I've met says everybody's very friendly here. And I wonder, yeah, uh, you know, it's, well, I think it's a you, you know, I think it's an Oma thing. Uh, I do, you know, there's a genuine interest from 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 all of the team. Everybody looks forward to the festival. Um, it's an opportunity to put our best foot forward and um, really just let people enjoy what the venue has to offer. I mean, we're so so lucky that, and, and you, you know, you, you know what the place is like. You know, the, the the way it's all set out with the the log cabins and the the shingle roofs and the snake fencing and all of that. You know. Yeah. We're, we're very lucky with the setting, but yes, it's all about the interactions with the people, and yeah. they're, they're just. I mean, I'm working at the folk park now, 
this is my thirty third year at Folk Park. Yeah. And there's there's a few people that are there longer than me even yes. and uh, you know, it's a place that kind of gets under your skin, and the people who generally work there, Don, are people who who like being around people. Yes. We meet we meet a hundred and thirty thousand visitors a year, and um, that that's what we're all about. And these last three weeks, when we've been closed, it's been very very difficult uh, because uh, the, the staff are just itching to to be back in there and have the place open and have visitors around. But whenever anyone comes into to, to the grounds of the folk park around Bluegrass or any other time, we score very high on on visitor satisfaction rates. You, you just have to go to TripAdvisor or to Facebook, uh, the social media platforms, and, and see the amount of positive comments and um yeah. you know how how we're how we're faring against other attractions from a satisfaction rate yeah. you can't rest on your laurels Not but to answer your question, I think it's really just all about the people. The people just love to... Well, none, none uh, less than yourself and, and Patrick and Dorothy and all the other staff that you have there. Oh, yeah, and, and a, a great team of folks, a great yeah. team of folks. Right. And, um, yeah. you know, we're we're just, as I said, dying to get the place open again over, over the next few weeks. And okay. ho- hopefully we'll see people, whether they be coming, they might not be coming from san francisco or the catskills or anything like that in great numbers over the next while but maybe it's an an opportunity for people who have places like the folk park on their doorstep to think let's just take a dander out there this year Uh, you know the fact that you do have it on your doorstep or or very nearby i think tourism right across the island is going to rely on the domestic market in, in a massive way this year uh, people might be thinking twice about travelling out foreign, and um, you know, spending spending time, and they're much valued pounds and shillings and pence uh, across the north of Ireland. Great, yeah, it it certainly is. I think that there are going to be changes, and changes will bring some opportunities and and some losses. But that that's the nature of life, isn't it? It's very uncertain. So we we live very much a day to day anyway, and this will be a a wake up call for us That's all. That's right. I think we're we think we're invincible and we think things can happen, but as you know and I know, life can change very quickly. You better believe it. You better believe it. Right. With your permission, Richard, I'm gonna put on some live music from the folk park, probably not heard in fifteen, twenty years. Uh huh. I have a little concert here that I recorded with Jeff and Vida. I'm not sure if you remember I could be too Oh four. yes, Je- Jeff Burke and Vida Wakeman, yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. I, I had them in the ship gallery for a concert one night and uh, I recorded it and I have it here on, on disc and with your permission and if you want to introduce them for us uh, for the great and the great of Oma and further afield you can have an hour of Jeff and Vida on stage at the Folk Park courtesy of yourself Fantastic So we have here a wonderful duet um, they spent a lot of time actually down in New Orleans uh, over the last uh, when they started out, actually. But I do know that they moved up to Nashville about 10 years ago. Um, Jeff Burke and Vida Wakeman, better known as Jeff and Vida. Right now I don't know your name Do you think that everything's the 
all change. Keep it at the back of my mind. If it's too red in daylight, see how love gets the all shine. I'll be burning up this town. I'll be back when I feel like coming down. I got money in the bank. I'll take all the more take. I'll be burning up this town. Don't leave lights on for me. Don't leave the door open. No for some songs. That's always a good feeling. And considering we wrote them, we should be able to play them for you. This one's called News for the Heart. It's all about divorce. <laughs> One, two, three. This is a, sort of a sad song. We got it's a, it's a song we wrote a while ago, and uh, we uh, last year last year we got the, the chance to record this for a film uh, in the states. They uh, they heard this song somewhere and they asked us to come do it. They're doing a, a movie about an old legend, a, a ghost story from Tennessee called The Bell Witch. Um, we were happy to get this on the uh, get this on the soundtrack. Now the movie's not been released yet, so uh, that's the next step. We hope it comes out. But if it does, make sure you keep an eye for it. It's supposed to be a mix between The Bell Witch. 
uh, project and Blair Oh Witch. Brother, the Blair Witch Project and Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? So it should be an interesting <laughs> film. <laughs> it's called Dead and Gone, this song. One, two, three. <laughs> second album. Uh, it's actually a cover song and uh, we, we wrote it because a good friend of ours came up with this tune and uh, knocked our socks off. He showed up a week before he was about to get married. He showed up at a jam session and played it for us. He said he had written it earlier that day and uh, it's just about the prettiest and saddest song I've ever heard. So I got to talking to him. I asked him how in the world he could write such a heartbreaking song a week before he's about to get married. And uh, this is the truth. I tell everyone this. This is what he told me. It's just, it's beautiful. He said he was thinking about, well, what he was doing with his life and the girl he was gonna get hitched to earlier that day. And he got to thinking about it. He said he found a little bit of sadness left in him, wrote the song and that got rid of it. He was completely happy. His name's Ed Skoog, and he wrote this one. It's called Oh Fire. always cold 
and his love's always cold. <coughs> oh, water. Let him go? Yeah. See, we wrote this set list, but uh, we don't always follow it. <laughs> you start playing, and then you just feel like, well, doing whatever you feel like. This one's called Let Him Go. It's one of our newer bluegrass songs on the new album. It's uh, for any of you girls out there who might have a bum boyfriend. Uh, I recommend just kick him out once and for all. Stop giving him your money. Let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go.
first time it left me But I swear it's the last Calls me up, calls my baby Request for this one too. It's not the happiest song in the world, but. sad song. <laughs> well, uh, Jeff's going to play a Delmore Brothers tune here. It's a, about an engine that used to run from Cincinnati all the way down to our hometown of New Orleans. And uh, it's so long ago, this song's all that's left of that old train. It doesn't run that route anymore. And even if it did, the Amtraks aren't quite the same. This one's called the Pan American Boogie. <clears throat> but we'll 
try to get it going here. One, two, three, four. Well, you listen here, folks. If you want to take a ride to get a ticket on the train to call the Pan American Fire. Watch the Pan American Fire. Lord, Lord, the train. It takes off the Cincinnati that you folks then you on the Swinging from side to side She's the best train liner that you ever will ride Watch the Pan American Fire No, no, no train Takes off to Cincinnati Then she books them new on Well, then she comes flying in Louisville And if the gals will kiss you Then the race horse will Watch the Pan American Fire Up Cincinnati, that you book them New Orleans. Now watch out, folks, big old trains coming down. Well, now there's a little girl down in Nashville, Tennessee. She'll be at the station waiting there for me. Watch the Panama Bay. No, no, no train. Takes off Cincinnati, that you book them New Orleans. All the cities are getting bigger, and the small towns seem to be getting smaller. They're actually drying up. And uh, we wrote this song sort of about that a few years ago. It's called One Horse Town. It's the title track of our first album. It's a. Uh, we were driving cross country and going on the highways, and of course, you can always find fast food, but one of those days we were driving through Meridian, Mississippi. We were just looking for a good old diner, a slice of apple pie, maybe some bad coffee. And uh, <laughs> couldn't even find it. Went down on the main strip there. Everything was boarded up. And it really just sort of broke my heart because basically what that means is all the old folks are there alone. All the young kids are living somewhere else. And obviously they don't get back much. And it seems like the, all those places are just dying. And that's sort of our history, you know. So I got to thinking about it. And, wrote this tune. It's called One Horse Town. Son, don't you count on luck to get you rich? It won't be quick. And son, you can't count on love. It'll turn you crazy. And then we'll run to travel far and travel. Go to the coast. 
Jive careful, cause you never know. You don't forget to sometimes call, any time is better than no time at all. That's the Irish weather, folks. One horse town. <coughs> the so longs and fair the wells have turned a good town to an empty shell. And though it may not be much to see, this old was sincere, looked in his eyes, they were bright and clear, and I know he won't come back to stay, nothing to keep him after today, he'll travel far, travel nothing left in a one horse town Can I see your tissue there? Thank you. Thank you very much. As you can tell, I've developed a bit of a cold. <laughs> no, actually, we've been touring a lot in the, in the south there, and I'm down to a quarter of a pack a day, my goodness. Not bad at all, but please forgive me. I'm not used to uh, this weather. <laughs> Well, here's one more of our little rock and roll tunes here. This one's called uh, Where the Dollar Stops. <coughs> one, two, three, four. Well, you're at a honky tonkin' with your good looking friends, spending all my money for the dough and cans. You no know, time for pulling me to call the cops now. Tell you, baby, this is where the dollar stops. Where the dial stops 
them. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'd like to do an old Bill Monroe song for you. We're big Bill Monroe fans. Bill, of course, responsible for bluegrass, probably. Not single-handedly, but sure close to it. Here's a song he did called uh, Uncle Pen. Well, the people come from miles away, dance all night to the break of day. When they call it hard, no snow, new Uncle Pen was ready to go. Quickie. This one's uh, one Vita wrote about, about remembering and not remembering. It's called I Remember Wrong. One, two, three. <laughs> Song Vita wrote it's a sweet little lullaby. 
on the newest record. And uh, I had nothing to do with this one. People seem to like it, and I can tell why. It's a beautiful song. And uh, it's, it's, uh, there's a line in it about this tree we have in New Orleans. It's called the Sweet Olive Bush. Really, it's more like a bush. And uh, you don't so much see it as smell it. It blooms in the evening time. And when you're out walking in New Orleans, uh, it perfumes the air in a, in a beautiful way. And it's an unmistakable smell. And uh, if you hear about the sweet olive tree in this song, that's what we're talking about. This one's called I Cried. <coughs> like a lovers hold each other tight they can't know what's such a night I cry moon came up and they smiled just like we did for a while when it sets like a child I cried silly girl silly fool teardrops can Place the moon, and though you know that to be true, you cry. There's the bench we used to sit, evening breeze, you brush my lips. I remember that one kiss I cried Then the star that you gave faded as dawn made its way and maybe it was just for that day I cried. Silly girl, silly fool, teardrops can't replace the moon. Though you know that To be true You cry Olive makes lovers high and tell each other such 
pretty lies May you never know the reason why Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks, folks. We've got one more tune for you here tonight. We do want to thank you again for being such a great audience and being here. We sure had a great time. And, of course, we want to thank the, the town and the Arts Council for having us here. And uh, Richard and the Folk Park and everybody who works so hard here. We've always had a good time here, and we thank you for being here. We're going to do an old bluegrass song to send you out on. The one called Slewfoot. Jim and Jesse, we heard you this song. We always have fun with it. Ready? One, two, three. Well, how many most tell me what you see? Bear tracks, bear tracks coming after me. You better get this the most, better not wait. Bear's got a little bit. Never been treated. Some folks say it looks a lot like me. I saved up my money, then I bought me some bees, and I started making honey. Cut down the tree, but my money's all gone. Old oh, Super Queen and made himself a home. There's a big round the middle, and he's brought across the run. Running nine miles an hour, taking 30 feet a jump. Ain't never been caught, he ain't never been tree. No, sir. Some folks say he looks a lot like me. Chase him up harder than we trapped him in the well. We shot holes, he would just hear him yell. There's a big round the middle, and he's brought across the run. Running 90 miles an hour, taking 30 feet a jump. Ain't never been caught, he ain't never been treated. Some folks say he looks a lot like me. Town. This one's called uh, In My Mind's Eye. See my family photos, hear my pa stories of granddad and Indians traveling on ponies, playing that old time hard time working man. 
and songs From North Carolina to New Orleans Milwaukee to Oakland And up to Eugene You can hear the echoes No more see the faces Troubles were fewer, the rivers were wilder, the skies they were bluer, the trees they were taller, and hearts they were true. Talked about one and losing and winning and working on farms and fighting in wars and starving in droughts and chaplain songs about building bridges and dams songs about mining and taking a stand. Songs about harvest, work in the land and dying. In my mind's eye, troubles were fewer, the rivers were wilder, the skies they were bluer, the trees they were taller, and hearts they were. We got one more for you. I guess this is the benefit or the trouble of a live show. <coughs> We're gonna do a song we haven't recorded. It's probably one you haven't heard before. We wrote it not too long ago. <coughs> Cute old story. It's called Daddy's Girl. About a girl, girl leaving her uh, hometown, moving out. Folks called her daddy's girl 
when she changed his name, but they don't know she's gonna go. When I grow up, that's what she said. Pack my bags and put on a pretty dress. Heads a turn when she steps out at the old depot. She's leaving town. Goodbye, daddy's girl. Instruments. Mr. Mike Kerr went on the stand-up bass. Thanks for listening.